So question A asks us to find the region in the first quadrant bounded by the x-axis and the graph. So in order for us to do this, we need to find the points of intersection. So we need to see where it's starting and where it's ending. Well, it's pretty clear that it's starting where x is equal to 0, because that's the origin. So we just need to solve the equation for the other x-intercept. So there's the equation. So I'm going to set that equal to 0. And it tells us that c is equal to 6. So we can go ahead and write this out. And then the zero product property tells us that we can set each of the elements in the product equal to zero. So 6x is equal to zero, and then 4 minus x squared is also equal to zero. Well, the first one obviously gives us our origin solution, so we just need to solve the other one. The other one tells us that x is equal to plus or minus 2. Well, we can ignore the minus part, since we're only looking at the first quadrant. Now that we have our boundaries, we can set up our integral. So we'll integrate from 0 to 2 of 6x rad 4 minus x squared. And don't forget your dx over here. Now, since this is a complicated product, we can't just integrate right away. We're going to need to use u substitution. And the more complicated term here is the 4 minus x squared. So we'll set u equal to 4 minus x squared. Therefore, du is equal to negative 2x dx. And now I'm going to solve for dx. So dx is equal to du over 2x. So let's go ahead and substitute everything into our integral. So we have 6x. And then I'm going to replace the square root with u. And instead of writing the square root, I'm going to write the 1 half power. And instead of dx, I'll replace that with du over minus 2x. And that's how I know I'm doing this right, because the x terms cancel out, and I'm only left with u's. So now let's simplify this integral a bit. The 6 and the negative 2, I can pull out as a negative 3, u to the 1 half du. There are multiple ways of solving this integral, but I'm going to do it the way that is more commonly expected on the AP Calculus exam. So we're going to need to change our boundaries. So I'm going to take the original bottom boundary of 0 and plug it into my u equals equation, and I get my bottom boundary is 4. And then when I plug in the top boundary of 2, I get that my upper bound is going to be 0. So by plugging in those boundaries, I can set up my new integral, everything in terms of u. There is another really common method of solving this, so if you want to see me do it, feel free to leave a comment below. So now, if I integrate this, I get negative 3. And then u to the 1 half becomes u to the 3 halves, divided by that upper power, so it's times by 2 thirds. My bottom bound is 4, my top bound is 0. And let's go ahead and plug everything in. So I'll go ahead and plug 0 into the upper bound here, and then I'll minus a negative 3 times 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 halves power. And remember, since this is the non-calculator portion, you don't need to numerically simplify your answer. However, I'm going to do that for you. So this first term cancels out to 0. These 3's cancel out here. And 4 to the 3 halves power is 8. So we have a negative negative 2 times 8, which is equal to 16. So in part b, they give us a little bit of a head start here by telling us what the derivative of the function is. So that's kind of nice, I guess. And it says for a particular spinning toy, the radius of the largest cross-sectional circular slice is 1.2 inches. What is the value of c? Uh, so what the heck is the largest cross-sectional circular slice? Well, if we look at the question, it says we're doing a revolution around the x-axis. And remember that when you have revolutions, the cross-section is just the line that's perpendicular to that axis of revolution. So as we go along this curve and we want the largest cross-sectional circular slice, that's right here. Hmm, it's almost as if the question is asking, where does this function reach a relative max? Hmm. Just like any other relative max question, we need to find our critical points. So remember that critical points are defined as when your derivative is either equal to 0 or undefined. So in the derivative that they give us here, when the numerator is equal to 0, that's when we get dy dx equal to 0. And then when the denominator is equal to 0, that's when we get an undefined derivative. Now from part a, we do know that the bottom is equal to 0 when x is equal to 2. So we actually don't need to check that one because we know that our max value occurs when x is less than 2. So let's go ahead and set our numerator equal to 0. c minus the quantity of 4 minus 2x squared is equal to 0. Well, obviously that's true when c is equal to 0, but that's not what we're testing here, right? We know that c is a positive constant. And then let's set 4 minus 2x squared equal 0. Then we get x squared is equal to 2. Therefore, x is equal to plus or minus rad 2. And of course, we're not going to use a negative rad 2 because we're only in the first quadrant. Now with the square root of 2, we're going to plug it into our original function for x. So we get c times rad 2 
times the square root of 4 minus rad 2 squared is 2. And then what do we set that equal to? Well, our y value is represented by the length of our cross section. So we're going to plug in 1.2 for y. So as we solve, we get c times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. So we get 2c is equal to 1.2. And then we get c is equal to 0 0.6. Part C says, for another spinning toy, the volume is 2 pi cubic inches. What is the value of C for the spinning toy? So the question tells us that we're revolving this region around the x-axis. And when we're doing that, we have vertical slices, so we're just going to use the disk method. And the general form of the disk method is pi. And we're going to integrate from the left bound to the right bound of the function squared dx. So here we have the function that they give us. And from part A, we know our boundaries, right? The first part is where x is equal to 0, and the second part is where x is equal to 2. Let's go ahead and plug in everything, pi, the integral from 0 to 2, of our cx rad 4 minus x squared squared dx. Squaring everything, we get the integral of c squared x squared. That 4 minus x squared, the square root cancels out. Don't forget your parentheses here. Now since c squared is a constant, we can pull it out in front of our integral. So now we just distribute that x squared, so we get 4x squared minus x to the fourth. So now we can integrate c squared pi, and then we have 4x to the third over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5. Our top bound is 2, our bottom is 0. And here the nice thing is that our bottom bound is 0, that means all the x terms are going to cancel out. So we just need to plug in that 2. So we get 4 times 2 to the third over 3 minus 2 to the fifth over 5. Let's simplify a bit more, so we get 4 times 8 is 32 over 3, 2 to the 5th is 32 again. The question says our volume is 2 pi, so we'll set this equal to 2 pi. The pi's cancel out, so we get c squared is equal to 2 over 32 thirds minus 32 fifths, and we square root both sides. And since this is the non-calc section, you don't have to waste your time simplifying. But for those of you who want the simplified form, here it is. So now I'm going to give my best guess as to how the nine points are going to be distributed. My guess is that for part A, you'll get one point for getting the proper bounds of 0 and 2, one point for setting up the integral correctly with the proper bounds in terms of x, one point for doing the u substitution correctly and getting that coefficient of negative 3. Now here the bounds I don't think will matter as much because there are multiple approaches to u substitution. And then you'll get a final point for getting the correct numerical answer of 16. For part b, my guess is that you get one point for getting the correct critical value of radical 2, and then one point for getting that c is equal to 0.6. Then for part c, I think you get one point for setting up the integral correctly with the correct bounds, one point for taking the antiderivative correctly, and then one point for getting the correct value for c. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep making more content like this.